On April 8, 1999, Major Tom Bessier looked out at the ink-black night sky from his mission commander's seat of the two stealth bomber. While contemplating his future at what altitude remains classified, Bussier saw flashes of lightning far below, rippling through the massive thunderstorm clouds that filled the entire horizon. It had been a long flight to enemy airspace 14 hours non-stop on an even longer last few months. The two pilots and their maintainers had been told to expect a bombing campaign of two or three nights at the start of the Kosovo War. This was their third month of round-the-clock operations. And now, a very dangerous mission awaited. For the first time in history, two two bombers were sent to penetrate enemy airspace in wartime without any Allied support aircraft to help. The weather over Yugoslavia was chaotic, but critical targets had to be hit. For the two pilots, flying at high altitudes above the weather and dropping bombs was one thing, but avoiding enemy radar and aircraft was quite another. The P-2 wasn't invisible to radar or the naked eye, it was just much harder to find and track. Just 12 days earlier, an enemy surface-to-air missile shot down U.S. Fon-17, a fighter that shared similar stealthy qualities as the P-2 in the same airspace. The good news was that the two black jets had ultra-secret low-observable stealth technology and a combat load of smart bombs called Joint Directed Attack Munitions Dams. The bad news was that by design, they had no defensive weapons of any kind and they didn't have enough speed to outrun enemy surface-to-air missiles or fighters. The pilots were surely dead if discovered and tracked down by the enemy air defense network or an enemy MiG-29 fighter. Bussier turned his head away from the stormy night and looked at his fellow warfighter in the left seat of the two. He spoke quietly over the intercom with focused determination. Weapons check complete. Let's go. It's game time. The other pilot nodded in agreement. Bussier reached forward with his gloved left hand and pushed the pen pennant rate button on the instrument panel dashboard edge, which automatically configured the jet to maximum stealth mode. The four pilots in the two jets began to prep for combat, securing their pistols, donning their survival vests, and rechecking their ejection seats. They were ready for the moment but knew they would need every bit of luck they could get tonight. Utterly alone, yet unafraid, they flew the two giant bombers into the battle, feet dry in enemy territory. It's hard to fully encapsulate the shock that the public experienced during Northrop Grumman's initial announcement and display of the two bomber on November 22, 1988. The two was futuristic and downright sinister. While there had been flying wing designs in both Germany during YE and in the US, after the war also built by Northrop, neither really resembled the giant black jet in anything other than basic shape. The designers also must have had a sense of humor and appreciation for one particular movie you can see that by looking head-on at the jet. While we'll likely never officially know if Northrop's two designers were big fans of the 1977 blockbuster movie Star Wars and its anti-hero Darth Vader, the cockpit shape is a virtually identical copy of Vader's helmet. Unfortunately, that was the highlight of the early days of the program. After the worldwide sensation generated by its announcement, the future of the two plunged into darkness. <laughs>